Hey there, how is it going everyone? In this video, we are going to be building a simple API, simple REST API using FastAPI, PostgreSQL and SQL Alchemy. Now, as you know, FastAPI is a really interesting framework to work with. I'm personally using it for the first time. So I decided to make this video well, to build a simple project with FastAPI just after learning it. So let's get started. So I'm going to start up by setting up our project. Now we have a blank folder right here, and I'm going to simply add a virtual environment to it from which we shall install all our dependencies. So let me start. So I'll start with uh, Python and going to run minus M then going to call them and env. So this is going to create a virtual environment within this folder. And the virtual environment is going to have a name of env. Now, once we do this, we install all the required dependencies for our project in this specific folder. So we're going to be using Fast API to build our API. And it's a framework that allows us to build APIs in a very fast way. And it's, it has an organized way of doing it, as we're going to see. So what I'm going to do is to install all the required dependencies. But before I do that, I'm going to first activate this virtual environment so source. Env. So we're going to do scripts, then activate. Now this is going to activate our virtual environment, just like you see here in the terminal. And the next thing is going to be to install Fast API. So we're going to install Fast API using pip install, and we're just going to say Fast API. Now this is going to install Fast API within our virtual environment. So Let's wait first API is going to install. After installing first API, the next thing is going to be to create our server. So you need to create a simple server, simple first API server. So you need to create a simple file here. Which I'm going to call main.py. Within this file, I'm going to start by importing first API class. So I'm going to say from first API, I'm going to import first API. And the next thing is going to be to create the instance of this first API class, which is going to be our app instance. So I'm going to create the app as first API. And after creating this app, the next thing is going to be to create a simple route. So I need to create a simple route such as at app. So I use the at app decorator and then I specify the method I'd like to call. In this case, we want to just get, so I'm going to pass in a root URL and write a simple view function. So I'm going to write the view function as dev index and this is going to just return a simple message. It's going to return simple JSON with a message and the message is just going to be hello, hello world. So I'm going to save this and to run fast API, we need an asynchronous server and we are going to use UVCon in this case. So I'm going to install UVCon. So I'm going to come in our terminal and say pip install UVCon. So this is going to install UVCon in our virtual environment. Now we shall run our server using UVCon. So to run our server, what I'm going to do is to say UVCon. Then I specify the app, which con the file that contains our app. In this case, it's main.py. So I write it as main. And then I specify the app instance, the first API instance, which is app. And then to reload this server, what I'll have to do is to give the reload option. I'll say minus minus reload. So this is going to reload our server every time we shall make code changes in our server file. I'm going to run this. And when I run this, we see that our server is now running at localhost 8000. So I'm going to navigate to that within our first API, uh, within Insomnia. It's the testing client I'm using in this case. However, you can use Postman or any other tool you know. So I'm going to go and create this new request. So I'm just going to call it Hello, hello world, and it's going to be a get request. So I have even other post 
a patch put delete and other requests so i'm going to first create this request so and then i'm going to just navigate to localhost 8000 and then send this request so when we send this request we see that the server has returned json as hello well a simple message from the server now what if we wanted to pass in something like let me say a name within our stream we're going to do this by creating another route so in this case we're going to return a greeting for a specific user or someone you may want to greet via our api what i'm going to do is to say at app dot get then i pass in the url so in this case it's going to be create and then i pass in the specific um value i would like to pass in our url in this case let me just call it the name so i'll just say let this be a name when this is a name the next thing is going to be to create our view function so to create this view function i'm going to call it grid and then i'll call it grid underscore name so i'll have to pass in the name but the most beautiful thing about fast api is it uses type hinting in the view functions so if i'm passing a name within our view function i have to also specify the type of this name and this is very useful as it helps us to validate the kind of data we send to our api so to do this i'm going to pass in a name and specify that this name is going to be a string so i'll pass it in as a string and the next thing is going to be to return a greeting to that specific name so what i'm going to do is to just return and this is going to return our so in this case we're going to say greeting and then we are going to return our greeting so i'm going to use an f string and then just going to pass in hello and then the name and let's try to see this in action we am going to save this and go back to insomnia so when i go back to insomnia i'm going to create a new request and this new request is just going to be a simple greeting so i'll just call it simple Creating, and it's going to be a get request so i'm going to create this request and i'm going to send another request to localhost 8000 in this case we have our url as grid slash name so i'll go back to our api and then say grid then I pass in the name as jonathan and in this case what i'll do is to send this greeting so i'll send this greeting and in this case we see that it is now returning the greeting hello jonathan now first api is organized in a way that it can help us to form models or to form schemas which help us to pass our data within the api as well as to give responses back from our api so let's try to create a simple example of a put request that actually let's try to create a get request that helps us to get a certain item by its id as well as a simple put request that helps us to update certain item by its id so to do this the first thing we're going to do is to use pydantic which is uh which is going to help us to create those schemas first api relies on pydantic to do all the type annotations all the type paintings we've been doing for the view functions i need to use pydantic to create a schema class or a, a model class that's going to help us to serialize the input that we're going to pass into the server and it's going to also help us to serialize that every object by, uh, which is going to be returned as a response so let's go ahead and do this so i'm going to use pydantic so i'm going to create a class so i'm going to import base model from pydantic in from pydantic i'm going to import the base model and to do this i'm going to just come this side and i'm going to create a class so in this case we are going to create a simple item class so this class is going to be an item and this is going to inherit from s model so after creating this the next thing will be to specify the various fields that we are going to have for our items in this case uh, i may say that each item is going to have an id which is going to be an integer and let's say a name that's going to be a string uh, we can also give it a let's say we can give it a description so we can pass in the description and the description can be also a string then the next thing we may also do is to also pass in a price so the price is going to be an int in that case so we're going to say that the price of our product or our item is going to be an integer we can also pass in a boolean which is going to specify whether this object or this item is um on offer or not so 
we may say on offer and we may pass this in as a boolean so i'm going to say bool and what this is going to actually do is to return uh, to give our default on offer as a boolean so now we've created our model class and we can be able to use this model class to serialize our responses or to marshal our objects that we may be able to pass in as returning responses from the server so let's go ahead and see how we can implement this so what i'm going to do is to create a simple put method or a simple put or post method that's going to help us to serialize and make use of our class item base model so to do this we are going to let me actually first comment this so this is going to act as our serializer it's what we're going to base on to serialize so and what i'm going to come and do is to create that put method so i'm going to say at app dot put and then I'll pass in let's say item so i want to put an item by its id so for this slash item then i'll say slash item id so what we want is to get an item by its id and then update it so i'll use these curly braces to to be able to put an item so what i'll do is to create a view function so this view function is going to be a view function which i'm going to call update item and this is going to take in the item id so item id as I said, we are using type hinting, therefore it's going to be an integer. Then the next thing is going to be to pass in the schema that we're going to use to serialize our item object. We're going to call this an item, and this item is going to be an object of the type item, the schema that we created up. So once we do this, the next thing is going to be to uh, return an object that's going to have such attributes. So to do this, what we're going to do is to just create this, and what we're going to do is just return. So I'll just return a simple object. What it's going to have is a uh, let's say name, and the name is going to be the item uh, dot name. So in this case, we are going to have item dot name. Let's say item. Uh, in this case, we have item name, we may have the item description. Let me, let me put this on a line so we can have the item description. And this is going to be item dot description. So we may also pass in the, so let's say we want to also get the price. So we say the price, this is going to be item dot price. And the next thing we may pass in is the offer. So let's say on offer. So we may return on offer, and this is going to give us item dot on offer. So let's save this and try to test our route. So I need to save this. And when I save this, the next thing is going to be to, to go and check this out in Insomnia. So I'm going to open up Insomnia. And what I'm going to do is to create a new route. So I'm going to say new request. Then it's going to be update and item. And the next thing is going to be to specify the request that you're going to create. So this is going to be a pull request. Then I create this request. Now I'm going to come and write the URL. So the URL is going to be localhost uh, 8000. This is going to be slash item. And then the, the ID of that item. So let's say item one. So since we've used our schema, this basically shows us that we need a request body that we're going to send to the server so that it updates our item. So to do this, what I'm going to do is to pass in the body. So I'm going to come and specify the body. So the body is going to be in terms of JSON. So I'm going to write the name. Let's say the name is going to be, let me enlarge this, is to see. So this is going to be milk. So and you pass in, let's say, a price. The price may be, let's say, um, integer, which is going to be 2000. And we also pass in a description. So say description, and this is going to be nice milk. 
So we may also pass in the on offer attribute. So I say on offer. this is going to be let's say it's going to be false. So when I say so it's false. So this is going to send this put request to this URL and give us a response. So I'm going to send this. And when I send this, we see that we we are getting an error due to Pythantic. It's going to give us an error. So this error is going to be so the field there's a field that's required that we have missed so let's go and try to check that out so when we go back to our model we are basically missing something so we have name id description so we've put in to put in the id to do that and we need to come and specify the id here the id is going to be let's say one so after doing this we are going to send this and when we send this, we see that now it's returning a correct response, which is having our item. Now, what if we want to pass in some optional query strings? For example, we want to pass in a query string. So to do that, I'm going to use a, a Python, a Python a module called typing to import the optional class. So I'm going to use typing. So I'm going to say from typing import. Then I import the optional class. So we are going to create a view function that's going to require us to pass in a query string in our URL. But that query string is going to be an optional string. So to do that, we need to come and create a simple get. So I'm going to say app dot get. And right here, I'm going to just say, so what you're going to do is to pass in, let's say, grid. Just going to create this grid function, but then it's going to take in a query string. And we're going to say grid, and then this is going to have a view function. So we are going to say grid, and we'll call this different. So we're going to call it grid, grid optional name. So just say grid optional. Or let's say grid optional name. So shall just say grid optional name. So what I'm going to do is to actually specify that the name in this case we want to grid is going to be a query string part of a query string that's going to be optional. So now let's say we are going to have our name as name. And this name is going to be an optional string. So to do this, we're going to use the optional class as we've imported it from, uh, from uh, typing. We're going to say optional. And then this optional, we specify the type of this optional attribute we would like to pass in within our URL. In this case, it's going to be string. And then after doing this, we we can even specify that we want a default of this. So if we do not have a default, we can say that the default is going to be user. So in case we don't provide that query string, we expect that first API is going to return hello user. So let's return uh, this so we can say return. Then what we can do is to just say message. Then we say hello. So I'm going to use an F string. So this is going to work, work as the first example. Then what you're passing is the optional string, which is name. So let's see this in action. So I'm going to go back to Insomnia and create a new request. So this new request is going to be, um, let me just call it query string. And when I say create, this is going to be a get request. So I pass in localhost 8000. When I pass in that, the next thing is going to be read, which is our endpoint. So when I send this request to this URL, we expect that by default, it's going to give us hello user. However, if we pass in the name as a query string, we expect that it's going to return the name as hello, the name that you're going to pass in. So let's provide that query string. To do that, I'm going to use this syntax. So I provide a question mark and specify what I want to pass in. So in this case, I want to pass in the name. And then the name I'm going to pass in is, let me say, Jonathan. When I send this, we expect that it's going to return, hello, Jonathan. And this is going to work just as we wanted. For now, we have been able to implement various routes. And the next thing we need to implement in this case is going to be the persistence. So we need our database to keep these records of our items and the various attributes that those items have, such as the name, the description, the price, and whether those have an offer or not. So to do this, we're going to use SQL Alchemy, which is the database toolkit for SQL databases with Python. 
So we are also going to use uh, PostgreSQL as our database in this video. So to do that, we're going to first begin by installing SQL Alchemy as well as the database driver for PostgreSQL. Then we shall go on and set it up so as to implement our models. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my terminal and stop the server. So when I stop this server with Ctrl C, I am going to install SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to write pip install. Okay, I'm writing capital letters. Let me first remove this. So I'm going to say pip install. Then I'm going to install SQL Alchemy. This is going to install SQL Alchemy within our virtual environment. Now, after installing SQL Alchemy, the next thing is going to be to set up our database. So SQL Alchemy is a database toolkit for Python. So what we're going to use it for this case is to use what we call object relational mapping, where we create our tables as classes, and those classes map onto each column in our table. So we are going to see how that is going to work. So what I'm going to do is to come, I'm going to create a new file, which I'm going to call a database. I'm going to call this new file database.py, and the first thing is going to be to uh, set up SQL Alchemy to work with our project. So the first thing we're going to do is to import OS. So I'm actually not going to use OS in this case. So I'm going to install SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to use SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to say from SQL Alchemy. Then SQL Alchemy basically has two types, the core and the ORM. But in this video, we're going to be using the ORM. So I'm going to say from SQL Alchemy.ORM, we are going to import the the declarative base so it is upon this we shall be able to create our model of classes so i'll say declarative base and then the next thing is going to be to import our create engine function which is going to basically link our sql alchemy to our database so what i'm going to do is to create so i'm going to say from sql alchemy what this is actually going to be from SQL Alchemy. I'm going to just import a function create engine. And the next thing is going to be to create this database connection string. So in this video, we're going to be using PostgreSQL. So one thing I forgot to actually install is a database driver for Postgres for Python. So I'm going to install that. So I'm going to come. I'm going to install the binary for that. So I'm going to say pip install. So this is going to be this name I can't actually read properly. It's going to be the binary. I'm going to let this install. And after installing this, uh, the next thing is going to be to set up our PostgreSQL to work with our SQL Alchemy. So first thing is going to be to create our engine. I'm going to say engine is going to be for to create engine. Now the first thing we can pass in is our our database string, just like you see here, Postgres, the user, the password, localhost, and then the name of the database. So to do that, we're going to first specify that we're going to use PostgreSQL. So I'm going to say PostgreSQL. And the next thing is going to be the user. So in this use, in this case, our user is Postgres. And then we pass in the password. Such passwords should be kept secret. However, for this video, I'm going to leave my password public. It write the password here, and we shall now write at localhost because this is going to be at host and then the database. So I'm going to create the database for this video and I'm going to go back to my PG admin. And right here, I'm going to create a database. So I'm going to say create, and then I create a database, and now I'm going to call this database item item db. Let me call it item db and I'm going to save this. So I'm going to say save. This is going to create our database. So I'm going to go back here and I'll say slash item db. And this is the connection string to our database. So I passed it within our create engine. The next thing I can also specify is the echo attribute so the echo attribute enables us to see whatever sql is generated when we carry out a certain transaction or 
when we try to carry out a certain database operation. So I'm going to put this on a new line. And I'm going to say echo is going to be equal to. So we're going to specify it as true for this case. And after doing this, the next thing is going to be to create our base class. So to do that, I'm going to just say that the base class is going to be equal to the declarative base. All this declarative base and we set it to be the base. So after doing this, the next thing is going to be to create our session maker. So I'm going to import the session maker from SQL Alchemy. So to do this, I'm going to say from SQL Alchemy, I'm going to .orm. So I'm going to import the session maker. So this is going to be session maker. After importing this session maker, I'm going to create a session local class that's going to that's going to help us to run database sessions every time we shall carry out operations. So I'm going to call I'm going to create a session session local class. So this is going to be session local, and this is going to be equal to a session maker. After doing this, we can pass in other attributes. So we can bind this to our current engine. So we can say the base is S and then session local can be bound to any class so we can bind this just like you see here they are saying that we can say bind and then we create we pass in an engine or an instance of the engine class so in this case we are going to call the engine so i'm going to pass in engine so what i'll do is to just say bind is equal to then we specify the engine so this is going to be our engine in this case we are done with setting up our our database now the next thing is going to be to create our database models as well as to create our models to our database so let's get started with this so i'm going to save this and when i save this the next thing is going to be to create our models so i'm going to create a new file which i'm going to call models.py and the next thing here i'm going to import the base class from from this database module so I'm going to say from database, I'm going to import the base class. And after doing this, the next thing we're going to do is create our models. So we are going to copy this model we are having in our serializer and put it into a database model. So let's get started with doing it. I'm going to create a class, which I'm going to call item. This is going to inherit from base. And it is from this base where I'll be able to create the various columns. So we're going to use SQL Alchemy to import columns and whatever attributes you may have for a specific column. We're going to use from, sorry for this, we're going to say from SQL Alchemy, I am going to import string. I'm going to import Boolean because you have a Boolean. And we are going to also import integer. So Going to import integer and let's see we have an integer string and boolean just like we've done this then we also import column so i'm going to import column after importing column the next thing is going to be to <coughs> to create our database table or our database model now when using sql alchemy the first thing we have to do is to always specify the name of the table that we're going to create and we store that within a variable called uh, underscore underscore table table name. So let me first correct this. It's going to be underscore underscore table name. And then I say that the table name in this case is going to be user. User. I mean, it's going to be items. <laughs> it's going to be items. After passing this in, uh, what I'm going to do is to specify that various attributes that our table is going to have or the columns it's going to have. And the way we do that is we first, first and foremost, we first create a primary key, which is going to be our ID. So I'm going to say that the ID is going to be column. Then I pass it in as an integer. And the next thing is going to be to specify that this is going to be our primary key. So I'll set the primary key attribute to true. And now we are having the next field. So we have a name. So let's say we are having a name. And our name is going to be column. 
which is going to be a string. So the good thing is we can be able to set the length of this string. So we can say that this length is going to be, let's say, 255 as the longest string. And you can also set it to not now by saying nullable is equal to false. So we can say nullable is equal to false. And the good thing is we can also specify it to be unique. We can put a unique constraint on this particular code. So we can say unique is equal to true therefore we shall have a unique name for every item we shall add to our database now we're also going to create our description so our description is going to be um hold on then we can call it let me correct this so this is going to be column now a description can be as long as what we want so i'm going to import an extra attribute which i'm going to call text and this is going to specify that our description is going to be of text that we cannot have a maximum length to. So I'm going to call this text. And after this, I'm also going to say that it's going to be nullable. It's not going to be nullable. So I can say nullable is equal to false. Or I can actually set this nullable to true and leave it just as text. Then the next thing is going to be to put the has offer attribute the one we called on offer so i'm going to put this as on on offer this is going to be a column and it's going to be a boolean and we can set a default so i can say that the default on offer is going to be false so after doing this um i can use uh, we can now create different objects of this class and this can be able to represent whatever data we are going to put within our table in the database. So the first thing is to save this. After saving this, I'm going to come to our terminal and open the Python shell. So I'm going to open this. Let me enlarge this for you guys to see. Now after this, I'm going to import our model from the models module. Then say from models, we are going to import our item model. Now, after importing our item model, I'm going to create various objects of this item class. So I can say new item is equal to an item. And this item is going to have a name. So let's say the first name is going to be, let's say, milk. I don't know why I'm thinking so much about it. So I'll say that the price, let's say the price is 2000. Then we say the description is going to be equal to nice milk. And we also have our, let's first put this down a little bit see our on offer so we have an on offer so we are going to say that on this is going to be on offer so something wrong let me first close this and pull up my terminal again Let's kill this terminal and reopen it again. So I'm going to open up my Python shell. I'm going to import my models. So I'm going to say from models, I'm going to import the item model. Then create various um, columns or various objects of this class. So I'm going to say new user is going to be equal to item. Then I'll pass in, let's say, the name as uh, i'll say milk then i can also pass in the description so i'll pass in a description this description may be uh, any description so in this case i'll just say nice one then the next case i'll say um we need we need a price so passing the price as so the price is going to be let's say two thousand and then we may pass in an on offer attribute this is going to be, let's say, true. And this is an object we've created for this. 
So now we see that we have uh, we have an error here. Race is an invalid keyword for item. So let's see this. So check whether we have it. We forgot to put that in our model. So let's add that. First, minimize this. So I'm going to go back to our model and add the price attribute. So I'm going to come and say price is going to be equal to column, which is going to be an integer. Change this. So this is going to be an integer and it's not going to be nullable. So we shall say nullable is going to be false. Then we are going to come back to our terminal. So I'm going to close this. After closing this, the next thing is going to be to, to open my Python shell and import the models. I'm going to say from models, import item. So after doing this, the next thing is going to be to create new instances of this. So I'm going to say new item. Going to be an item. Let's say it's going to have a name. Let's say milk. Let's say it's going to have a description. So pass in the description. And this description is just going to be nice. No, for now. And after doing this, the next thing is going to be to pass in a price or pass in the price. And this price is going to be 2000. After doing this, the next thing we can also pass in is the output. So the on offer attributes, so we can say on offer, and then on offer we can say that it's on offer, so it's true. Then that is going to create an object of our class item. Now to call this, we can say new item. When I call a new item, we see that it's just returning an object of the class item. So we can fix this kind of syntax by changing this so that it returns a string representation of our object. So let me close this. I'm going to run out of my Python shell. So I need to come and create a dander repre method that's going to return a string representation this model. So I'm going to say def repre. This is going to be self. This is going to come and just return a string representation of this. So I'll use an f string and then this is going to be an item, a name of. <clears throat> so let's say this is going to be self dot name, and then I'll say price. So I'll just use the name and the price for this case. So I'll just say price self dot price. And now we can represent. We can be able to return our objects as strings. So now. After doing this, we have been able to create our model. Now, the next thing is to be able to create our database with this table that has this model. So to do that, I'm going to open up my Python shell again. So I'm going to clear my terminal with Control L. Pull up my Python shell. So I can actually do it from here or do it outside. So let me try doing it from outside. I'm going to create a simple module, which I'm going to call create db by what this is going to do is to create our database and migrate every module that we have to the database. So to do this, I'm going to import. When you look back in our database module, we are having our engine, we're having our base and our session local. So we are going to use our base class to be able to import, to be able to write our model to our database, which we described in this engine variable. So to do this, I'm going to first open up, actually, let me open up the terminal and show this again. I'm going to open up my Python shell. Now we are going to import our model. So I'm going to say for models, we are going to import the item class. And once we have this model, having this table name attribute, we can be able to access its metadata. So to do this, we can be able to access the metadata through the table. A table variable. So I can say item dot underscore underscore table. And this is going to return the various uh, metadata about our our <coughs> our model. So this returns that uh, the metadata, the columns, the various columns and whatever attributes we passed in that class. So I, I just wanted to show you that now this is useful because it's going to help us to create our 
models in our database. I'm going to close the terminal for now. I'm going to go back to our create DB. The first thing we shall need is our base class. So I'm going to say from database, I'm going to import base. When I import this base class, the next thing is going to be to import our models. So I'm going to say from uh, from uh, models, we are going to import the item model. Another thing we may need from the database is the engine because we need to pass it to the base while creating this in the database. So I'm going to call the engine also. Now after passing in the engine, the next thing is going to be to, to create our database. So after doing this, we are going to, so I'm going to just print here that to make a simple print so I'm going to say creating creating database so this is going to just be printing creating database just to show us some login in the console and after this we are going to just call a simple method on the base class so I'm going to say base dot metadata so we want to call base dot metadata and then we are going to pass in what create all so we're going to call the create all function and then pass in the engine. So I'm going to pass in the engine from our from our database module. So I save this. Now so running this file is going to help us to create our database with the various fields that we mentioned in our models. So let's try doing this. So I'm going to pull up my terminal and hoping that everything is working. I'm going to run Python hdb py. And running this is going to create our database. So when you run this, we see that our database is now running and our database has been created. And we see that since we set equal to true in our database here, we can be able to see the SQL that's generated when creating the table. So when you go to our PostgreSQL, we can also be able to see that we've created such a table. So let me go to itemdb. I'm going to go to schemas. And then in schemas, I'll go to tables. And we see that we have our columns created as we have set them just within here. So we see that we have our columns, like we set them in our models. So this has worked. So let's go ahead and try to manipulate our model on our API. Now, after creating our models and creating our database, the next thing is going to be uh, to make use of our database via the API. So to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is to revisit the item model we created with Pydantic. So we are going to add some specific configurations that are going to enable our Pydantic model to work with our SQL Alchemy model. So to do this, I'm going to create a class, which I'm going to call config. This class is going to take in one specific attribute or one property. So that property is going to be the ORM mod. What the ORM mod does is to basically help Pydantic automatically serialize our SQL alchemy objects into JSON. So to do this, I'm going to just set this attribute to true. And after that, we are set to start using our API with the models we have in our database. So let's get started. Now I'm going to first remove these routes for now. So I'm going to remove these routes. And after removing these routes, we are going to implement routes that are going to make use of our database. So let me start implementing them. So the first route is going to be one that we use for getting all items. So I'm going to call this items. And then I'm going to give it a view function. So I'm going to say def items. So this is basically going to return a list of items. So I'm going to say return. Actually, let me pass it for now and create the other methods. So I'm also going to create one that gets a specific item. So this is going to be app dot get, and then it's going to have an a URL of slash item slash then we are going to pass in the item ID in this case. So I'll say item ID. And then the next thing is to write the view function. So the view function for this is going to be get, get an item. So this is going to be get an item. 
So this is going to get the item by its ID. And as we said, uh, Pydentic uses type hinting. So I'll use type hinting. So this is going to be the item, item ID. And then we shall specify that this is going to be an integer. So I'm going to write it as an integer. And after writing this is an integer, I'm going to also pass. After passing, I'm going to come and write at app dot. I'm going to now create the post method. So this post method is going to be the method that's going to help us to, to get a new item. So this is going to be a post method on the URL items. And we are going to attach a view function. So this view function is going to be one for creating. So I'm going to create a uh, create an item so after doing this i'm also going to pass and now the next thing i'm also going to do is to also uh, create one for putting and deleting so i'm going to say up dot put and then pass in so this is going to be slash item then it's going to be slash item then slash this is going to be item id and then we are going to to create the view function. So the view function is going to be update. And again, so this is going to be update an item. Then we shall pass in the item ID. So the item ID be an integer. And I'm going to pass this for now. Now next thing is going to be to implement that route. It's going to delete these items. So to delete an item, I'll do app dot delete. And this will take in the URL. So in this case, it's going to be slash item slash item ID. So we pass in the item ID of that item we want to delete. We need to create the view function as delete. This is going to be delete item. After doing this, what I'm going to do is to pass in the item ID. So the item ID in this case is going to be an integer. So we pass this. So as you can notice, we are now having all the routes that we are going to use to, to create our, to, to work with our database mostly. So to do that, we are going to make use of our session local class. So I'm going to import it from the database uh, module. So I'm going to say from, from database, it's going to be from database. I'm going to import the session local class. So I'm going to say, a session local and after importing this session local class we are going to create an instance of it and we're going to put it in a variable which we're going to call db so i'm going to come and just say db is going to be to going to be equal to our session local so we're going to call that now after calling this the next thing is going to be to implement our route that's going to return a list of items so we are going to serialize that using our item serializer class or what we created with pydentic i'm going to come and specify within our route that we are going to use our response model so this is what we're going to use to um, serialize the object to return our json so i'm going to create a list so to implement a type of a list i'm going to use typing so i'm going to go back here and say from typing import optional and i'm also going to import list after doing this, I'm going to say that we need a list. And this list is going to be a list of items. So I'm going to pass in the item class, and it's going to basically make a list from the item class. So I'll just say item. Just pass in the item class. And after doing this, what we shall want is also a status code. So I'll be passing a status code, and this is the status code we are going to return with a response. So to do that, I'm going to just pass in the status code. And in this case, we want this 200 status code. So after doing that, what I'll come and do is to basically query for all the items of the for, for all the items from the database. And in this case, we expect an empty list of items. So to do this, I'm going to create the items and I'm going to use uh, the DB session local instance we've created. So this is going to be db dot query and then dot so in this case i pass in the what i have to do is to pass in the class i'm going to query so to pass in the class we are using the item class so i'm going to import that from models so instead of doing that what i'm going to do is to import models 
After importing models, what I'll do is to pass in the models class. So I'll say db.query. Then what I'll do is to pass in the model class. So I'll say model models dot, and this is going to be the item class. Then we shall uh, query all the items. So I'll say dot all, and this is going to return all the items in our database. So after returning these items, what you're going to do is to basically return all these items to us via the serializer. As you see, this response model is responsible for serializing all that data, the list that's going to return as an object to us. That query set is going to be intrude in terms of JSON. So what we're going to basically do is to just return the items list. So we are going to return the items. So let's save and take a look at this. So I'm going to go back to Insomnia. And all I'll do is to create a new request. So I'm going to create a new request. And I'm going to just call this get all items. So after getting all these items, it's going to be a get request. So let's try to create this. So to create this, I'm going to just pass in the URL as localhost 8000 and then make a request to it. So this shows that it's not found. So I'll have to pass in the items. So it's slash items. So when I send this, it's going to return an empty list of items, just like we saw, because you haven't yet created any item within our list. So let's go ahead and implement one that basically creates our items. So to do this, I'm going to go back to our code. So I'm going to go back to VS Code and go to the one that creates an item. So I'll do the same thing. I'll pass in the response model. So I'll say response model. Is going to be equal to so in this case it's going to be just the item model since we're returning one item instance or one item object and we may pass in the status code because when we create we use the status code as we can set the status code via our post method so when we create something we basically use the 201 created uh status code however if we do not know what specific status code we are to return, we may use the statuses that are provided to us by FastAPI. So I need to go and import status from FastAPI. So I need to say from FastAPI, import status. And after importing status, I'm going to come and say that the status code, instead of specifying the status code, I may just say status code is going to be equal to a status dot. So we see the various status codes here. So that's going to be status.http, and this is going to be 201 created. So I'm going to say HTTP 201 created, and this is going to be our status code we are going to return. So let me put this on a new line to make you guys see it properly. So I will also minimize that. So I'm going to put this on a new line. So what we have is our route and our status code and our serializer model or the response model. So to do that, what we need is an item. So what I'm going to do is pass in the item in here. So I'm going to say item. What we shall need is to get the body as an item. So I'll pass in our item model class, which we created with Pydantic. And this is the kind of the response body, all the request body we shall have to pass in to our API. So to do this, I'm going to just create a new, a new item object so we are going to say new item and our new item is basically going to be an item so in this case it's going to be the one from the model so i'm going to call this models dot item then we shall pass in the name so the name is going to be uh the name we shall get as from the request from the json that's passed on to our request so this will be the item dot name and then we shall pass in the price. So we are going to pass in the price as item price. And then we shall also pass in the description. So when you have the description, so we, shall, we are going to have our description. So this is going to be our description. It's going to be all the description that will come as JSON from the sub from the client. So this is going to be item dot description. And then the next thing is going to be to create um, the own offer so this is going to be the own offer and is going to be item dot on offer so after creating this object the next thing is going to be to 
to save this to our database. Now, the way we create, uh, the way we create and be able to add things to the database is by using the session local class. So we are going to use the session local instance. And in this case, what I will do is to just say db dot add, and then add the object you are going to add to the database. This basically just adds it to the database session. Doesn't commit. It doesn't really add it to the database. So what we're going to do is to just add the new item. And after adding the new item, the next thing we're going to do is to commit this to the database. So I'll just say db dot commit. And after doing this, the next thing we're going to do is to just simply return the newly created item. So since we are using Pydantic, it's going to automatically serialize our item object, and it's going to give us back JSON data. So we're going to just say return. This is going to just be return the new item, the one that we've created. And since we specified our status code, it's going to return a status code of 201 created. So let's see this in action. So I'm going to save, hoping that our server is running. So our server is still running. We don't have any errors. I'll go back to my insomnia. I'm using to test. I'll go and create a new request. So this new request is going to be the one creating an item. So this is going to be a post request. And we need to create this request. So I'm going to make a request to localhost. This is going to be localhost. And it's going to be localhost 8000. So slash items, uh, let's check if we are right. So when I go to Visual Studio Code, it's going to be slash items. So when I go back to Insomnia, what we need is the body that you're going to send with the data to the server. So I'll create the body and specify it as JSON. So this is going to be a JSON object. Now we need a name. So this name is going to be, let's say, uh, milk. I still don't know why I want to drink milk. So after doing this, I'm going to pass in a price. So let's say the price is going to be 2000. And then we may want to pass in the description. So we say description is going to be equal to nice, nice milk. So we are going to pass in the description as nice milk. Then the next thing is going to be to pass in the own offer attributes. So we are going to pass in the own offer attribute and pass it in as true. Let's see this in action. So when we create this, when we send this, we expect that it's going to create the object and return for us a status code of 201. So let's try to do this. So I'm going to send. And when I send, we see that there's one position, there's one requirement that is needed. So we have not provided an ID in this case. And this is returning us an error. So let's try to see this. So when I provide an ID, let's say an ID is equal to one. So this guy, when I provide an ID, we expect this to work. So when I send this, uh, our request has worked, and now we are having our object created and the 201 status, which is created. However, if you remember that we specified our name to be a one that is unique. So to prevent creating of a nullable, to create, to prevent the creating of um, Non unique names, what we can do is to basically stop that from happening. So, what you're going to do is to, to come and import the HTTP exception. So, we're going to import HTTP exception from first API. And after importing this, what you're going to come and do is to basically first query for an item with a specific name and then be able to give an error in case that name exists. So, what I'm going to do is before I save this item, what I'm going to do is to say, um, so if item, um, let's say if item dot name, let's say if uh, the new item exists, so we can what what we can actually say if new item. Actually, what we can do is to first query for an object with a specific name, so we can say call this. Let me say db. Uh, db item so i'm going to call this db item and this is going to be models but uh, it's going to be models dot query then we specify the model on which we are querying so this will be models dot item and then it's going to first find that so we're going to filter by the id so what we're going to do is to say if the name is equal to the name that we have passed within this new item then we return the exception so what i'm going to do is to say um if a new item 
dot name is equal to actually what I can do is to say if item dot name this is going to be if item dot name is equal to so what we can do is equal to new item dot name this is going to basically we are going to return the past object so what I'll do is to return the past object and after returning this object we shall check if it exists so we shall say if db item so this is going to be db item is not and so if db item is uh if we have a db if we have an item that exists with the same name what we what we are saying here is that if it's not none what we are going to do is to basically return that raise that exception so we shall raise uh, the http exception and then we are going to pass in our status code so the status code in this case is going to be 400 then we are going to pass in the details so we need to just say details detail is going to be so we can say um item ready exists so let's try to save this when i save this and we send that request we are going to get an error in this case so if i send this we having an internal server error let's try to first troubleshoot this so uh, we are having models has no attribute query so let's see this so this is basically models.query it was supposed to be session.query so this is db.query sorry for this so after saving this uh, hoping our server is now running without errors which is happening so i'm going to go and i'm going to go and rerun this so i need to go back to insomnia and send this request and now we are seeing that the item already exists which means we cannot create an item with this with the same name so let's try to get all items so to do this i'm going to go back to our code and we we want to basically get all the items so when you try to get all these items so i'm going to go back and get all items we expect that this time we are going to get items in our database so when i send this we see that our database is now having uh, items so now after doing this the next thing is going to be to implement a route that's going to return for us one item so i'm going to create this request so i'm going to come and say new request this is going to be get one item and it's going to be a get request so i'm going to create this after doing this i'm going to send in a request to local hosts uh, 8000 and this is going to be to slash item let's say slash id1 now we've already written this uh, route so let's try to implement it to the database so the same thing i'm going to do in this case i want a response model to be the item so i'm going to pass that in and the status code is going to be so let's use the status so i'm going to say status uh, dot http 200 this is going to be http 200 Okay, and after this happening, we are going to basically use our database model. So I need to come and say our uh, item going to be. So we are going to query the item with this specific item ID. So to do this, I'm going to say I'm going to say this is going to be db dot query. Then I pass in the model. So I'm going to say models dot item. And then I'll have to filter by ID, so I'll say filter. Then I'll say um, after filtering, I'll say uh, this is going to be going to filter by the ID, so I'll say the ID filter. Then I'll say um, going to filter by uh, the ID, so I'll say models dot item dot ID. Then I'll say equals to then the item id so this is supposed to return the item with that id so after doing this i'm going to say item id and then i'll return the first object that has that specific item id so after returning this the next thing is just to just be returning this item i'm going to come and say return item and after returning this item we i'm going to save and go back to insomnia to test this so i'm going to go to insomnia and what I'm going to do is to send, and this is going to return our item 
with that specific item ID. So let's go back and implement a route that is going to help us to to um, to modify a specific item. We're going to come just down here to the put item ID. So in this case, what we're going to also do is to pass in the response body. So I'm going to pass in the response body response model as item class, the one we created with Pydantic. And the next thing is going to be um, using the status code. So I'm going to say the status code. <sighs> Give me, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm going to set the status code to um, status. Dot. This is going to be HTTP 200, OK? And after doing this, I am going to Basically, first query for that specific item. So I'm going to say um, item is going to be equal to db dot, db dot query. Then pass in the model. So I'll say models. But it's going to be item. Then I'll say filter. What I'll do in this case is to filter by the item ID. So I'll pass in the item ID. After doing this, I'm going to say what I want is to get the item ID. So I'll say models dot item dot id equal to the item id and for as long as that item id is equal to we want to just get a first first object with that item id after doing this the next thing which i also require is to set these these items fields to what we shall get as json so we are going to also pass in the item so i'm going to pass in item and then pass it in the item. In this case, is going to be the item. So I may call this the item to update. So I'm going to change this to item to update. And after doing this, I'm going to simply come here and and set the, this to the various fields that we have in the item. So what I'll do is to set. I'll say item to update dot m. Is going to be equal to the name we set from our the name that we set from our JSON. So this is going to be item dot name and then item to update dot so let's say price is going to be equal to item dot price and then description. So we're going to say item dot description. Going to be equal to uh, this is actually going to be item to update so item to update dot description this is going to be equal to item dot description after this the next thing we're going to do is to also get the own offer so we're going to say item to update dot on offer so this is going to be on offer is going to be equal to item dot on offer and after doing this the next thing is going to just be saving this to the database after updating so i'm going to just say db dot meet and what we will return as our response is just the object that we updated so we need to just say return item to update i'm going to save this after saving this uh, i'm going to go to insomnia and test this so we are going to get our object with ID of one. So I'm going to create a new request and call this um, and say update um, an item. So this is going to be a put. I'm going to create this. So I want to make a body. This body is going to be as JSON. So first thing we're going to pass in the the ID, so we need to pass in the ID. The ID is one for that object. Then we shall pass in the name. So the name is going to be equal to, let's say, uh, milky. After setting this to milky, we can set the description. Let's say the description uh, is going to be, let's say, uh, key. So we need to call this milky milk. <laughs> this is fine. So. Uh, the next thing I'm going to pass in is the price. So we pass in the price, and then the price is going to be let's say three thousand. So we are basically changing this entire item. 
after doing this, the next thing is to uh, set their own offer. So I'm going to set this own offer attribute. I'm going to set it to, to true. And let's make this request and see what it's going to return. Hoping that our server is running, we need to pull it again, still running. So when I go back this side, we need to make the request to localhost 8000 slash item slash one. And when I send this, it's going to update our record. Now the next thing is going to be to implement our route for deleting. Um, for deleting a specific item. In this case, we are going to delete this item with, with the ID of one. So I'm going to go back to Insomnia. Actually, what I'll do is to create other basic, I'm going to create other items. So I'm going to go to host and create other items before deleting this specific item. I'm going to create one with an ID of two, and then I'll pass in uh, the name as, let's say the name is going to be biscuits. And let's say the price is going to be 2500. So when I send this, so we are seeing that the item exists. So let's try to see, um, seeing that the item exists. And let's check our server. So basically, we see um, this is going to be a bad request because. Mm, it's going to be a bad request because we seeming to get that it exists. So let's try to get all items. So when I send, we are having this. So let's try to create another item. So I'm going to create an item. Another item. Let me call this. Uh, let me just call this soap for now. And then I'll also change this to this. This soap. So when I send this, we are seeing bad requests. Uh, time for some debugging here. We are having an error. So I'm going to go and check this. So I'm going to go back to the route that creates our item. We're going to see um, db.query models.item filter item.name. Going to be new item.name. And what if we just get the name? So I'm going to change this. So I'm going to come and basically cut this from here. And what I'm going to do, actually, I'll undo that. Then cut this code. After cutting this code, I'll simply put it above the newly created item. Then paste it. After pasting this, the thing I'm going to do is to actually remove this. So instead of Instead of using this, we what we're going to do is to actually use models dot item dot name is equal to item name. Then this is going to basically help us to run. So after doing this, I'm going to save. Hoping our server is going to run. So let's hope this time is going to work. It's going to work. <laughs> so I send this and this case we've been able to create. Let me create as many objects. So I'm create one with ID of three, and let me say this is going to be soapy. So when I send this, we have that created. Let me create another one. So we're creating one with ID of four. Now we may say that this is going to be. Let's call this a blanket. I'm going to call this a blanket. When I send this, we are going to create another item called a blanket. So let's try getting all items. Now, after getting all items, we expect a list of all items. Now, these are the items we've created. After creating these items, the next thing is going to be to create a route that deletes an item. So I'm going to create a route that's going to delete an item. So I'm going to go back to the code and <clears throat> minimize this terminal. Go to that specific route that deletes an item. So we are going to first query for this item from our, from our database. What I'm going to do is to say item, item to delete is going to be equal to, so we're going to query for that. So we're going to say db.query. Then we're going to pass in models dot item. Then we are going to 
to query for that we're going to filter for the id so we're going to use filter then what we're going to do is uh models we are going to query by the id so we're going to say models dot this is going to be dot item dot id so we're going to search for an item with an id of item id so this is going to be item id then dot first and if this doesn't exist of course you are going to throw an error so what i'm going to do is to actually say i'm going to say that <coughs> what i'm going to do in this case is to say that we are going to um what i'm going to do is uh say that if item if item to delete uh is none so let's say is none in this case is it's none it does not exist what we need to do is to raise the exception of not found so what i'm going to do is to raise the http response http <laughs> http exception so we're going to raise an http respect uh, exception of status so we shall pass in the status code as so we need to say status dot http 404 not found and then the details we shall just say resource not found so we need to just say resource let me correct this so this is going to be resource resource not not found after doing this, I'm going to call this the detail. Sorry, this is going to be the detail. It's going to be resource not found. And after that, the next thing we're going to do is to basically return the item that we've deleted. So I'm going to just return. So I'm going to return. Uh, actually, let's just return the item. So I'm going to say item to delete. And this is going to work. So let's try it in our insomnia. I'm going to go back to insomnia. And what I'm going to do is to send that delete request. So I'm going to put a new request. So I'm going to say it and item. And this is going to be a delete request. So I'm going to create it. After creating it, I'm going to come and create request. So I'm going to say localhost 8000 slash. This is going to be um, a delete request to, let's say, item one. And when you send this, we expect that item to be deleted. So it has been deleted and we are getting a status code as 200. So what I'm going to do in this case is to query to see whether the item has been deleted. So I'm going to resend this request. And when we send this, let's try to see. This is returning the whole list because the hardware actually deleted anything, which is a mistake I did. Give me for that. So I'm going to come and Basically, once we check and we see that that item exists, what we'll do is to use the session local instance to delete that object. So we shall say db dot delete. Then we pass in that object which is going to be the item to delete, and then we shall just commit to the database. So we're going to say db dot commit. So let's try to do this. So in a save, hoping our server is still running, it is. I'm going to go back this side and try to delete. I'm going to send this request and it's going to delete. So when I try to get all items, we now see that we are starting with that of ID of two. And this means that our item has been deleted. Now, the next thing we are going to take a look at is how we document our API with Swagger. So, first API comes with automatic documentation of our API. Uh, using Swagger and Redoc. So let's try to check this. So I'm going to go to my browser, and what I'm going to do is to go to localhost 8000 slash API, I mean slash docs. This is going to be slash docs. And this is basically going to show us all the routes we've implemented in the Swagger documentation. So this is the beauty with Fast API is it does this under the box. So you don't have to do this on your own. It does it for you. And another thing is it also comes with Redoc. So we can be able to also view the Redoc documentation of our API. So I'm going to go to localhost 8000 slash Redoc. 
And then we see a more detailed documentation of our API, which is here. So just as you see, we see the successful responses and the various fields that we're supposed to pass in are all explained in detail. So after doing this, we can be able to document our API automatically using Fast API. Now, for now, I think our API has been complete and we have done quite a lot. So in this video, we've been able to create a, fast a REST API using Fast API. And thank you for learning with me. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel as I'll be doing this a lot. And thank you for watching. I'll leave a like, comment, share this video to other people. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.